Hi everyone, it's Expresso Mechanic here with another tutorial for you. In this one we're going to create blinking lights, the, the type that you'd see at a level crossing basically. They alternate between the left and the right light. Now to create this we're going to use a flip-flop, which is something we've never looked at actually in any of my tutorials so far. So it's a bit of a new venture for us. So without further ado, let's open the Expresso editor and see where we go from here. Okay, so the first thing we need is a time node. So I'll grab one of those and I'm going to get rid of the time port. I don't need that. I want frames in there. So I'll just get a frame set up there. That's great. Next thing we're going to need is a math modulo. So we'll come down to calculate math and we'll change this to a modulo. Plumb the frames into the first input there and then set the value. I'm going to do this at 30 because I want, to, I want to make these things alternate every second. So 30 frames to one second, that will do us fine. Next thing we need to do is get a compare. So logic compare. And we don't have to do anything here because the function is already set to equal to and, and zero is what we need it to be. So we'll just plug the modulo into the top of the, the first input in the, in the actual compare there. And I'm going to bring in a general uh, remark here, or not remark, a result. I'm just going to bring a result in there and we'll have a look and see what this is doing. So let's see. So we start off with one in, as the result. Now what you'll see if we run the timeline, should see it blink every 30 frames if we're lucky. If we do animation refresh, I think we might get a better result there. Let's just turn that on, go back again to the beginning and see what we get. There we go, you can just about see the naught blinking. There yeah, occasionally it blinks more than more visibly than at other times. But that's absolutely brilliant. That's what we need. So every 30 frames, the modulo will output a zero and the compare will output a one, which is exactly what we need it to do. Right, so the next node that we're going to bring in is the all important one, which is the flip-flop. So if we go down to general here and we just select a flip-flop and bring this in here. Now we don't need to worry about the on and offs, we just need to plug this straight into the switch. Okay, so we've got our basic setup done at this stage. Let's bring in that result again and plumb it into the flip-flop and we'll see what's going on here. Right, so it's starting with a one at the output, at frame zero. Let's just run it. So you can see it actually switches between a zero and a one every 30 frames. So that will allow us to alternate between our lights and switch them on and off. So that's perfect. So we'll take the result away. Just move this lot over a little bit over here. Right, the next thing we're gonna do, we need to bring in a couple of textures that I've got here. I've got one for on and one for off for the lights. So if we bring the two of those in, just drop them in there. Okay. Set their outputs to object. Well, that's fine, they're set up. Following on from here, we need two conditions. Logic condition, just bring that down and copy that to another one. So we've got two there, that's fine. And the switch, we need the flip-flop for. So we're just gonna plug the, the output of the flip-flop into the, the switches of these two conditions there, okay? And then all we need to do is put the off in the input number two of our first Oh, actually, we can't do that. I've got to just set these up first with the correct the correct uh, data type, which is going to be material. So we, we just need to set those up with those. OK, and then I should be able to plug these in to the then I can if they're going green. So that's no problem. We can plug those into there. So we're going to plug those two into the top one there in that order. And then the bottom one, we're going to put the off in the input three there and the on in input two. So it's the reverse of what we've got in the top one. And that's fine. So that's that part of the setup done. Following on from here, what we need to do next is where we've got our lights. We need to bring in the texture tags for them. Just bring those in, or the material tags I should say, just bring those two in, 
one there and one here. And then we need to plumb these in. So we just go over to here, go down to tag properties, material, over to here, tag properties, material. And you can see straight away one of the lights is lit up. So what we can do now is play the simulation and we'll see what happens. So you can see it works. It's doing exactly what we said we wanted it to do. Every second, the lights are blinking alternately. We could leave it at that, and that's fine. I mean, that's it's pretty simple as a setup, as you can see in there, and we, we could just leave it at that. But what we might want to do is, at, the, at frame zero, we might not want either light to be lit. So what we'll do first, to set that up is very easy, actually. We just need uh, another condition node or another couple of condition nodes, I should say. And we also need another compare. So if we bring in another compare first, let's just bring that in. Drop that over there. And we'll put this one up here. And we're just going to plumb the, the, the frames in again. Again, it's it's equal to zero is exactly what we need it to be. Because obviously, when, it, when we're at frame zero, we want to switch all the lights off. So that's fine. We can just bring in a couple more conditions. Come down to logic condition. We'll leave these. Um, well, actually, I think no, we, we can't leave them as they are. We, we need to just bring the two of them in there and then set those both to, uh, to, to materials as well. So we'll set those up as materials. That'll be fine. OK, that's good. And then all we've got to do is plumb our switches from our compare into those two nodes there. And then what we'll do is simply plug in the outputs from the actual first two conditions here into the out into the inputs uh, number twos of the, the the conditions here. So we're either going to get these conditions or we're going to get basically nothing uh, at frame zero, or, or rather everything switched off. So we'll switch the off put the off rather into there and into the bottom one there. So now it's a case of if it's at frame zero, we're just going to get everything switched off. Or if it's any other frame, we're going to get the results of uh, these two conditions here based upon what the flip flop is doing. So all we need to do then is just plug these into here, just plumb those in there. And now you can see at frame zero, we've got no lights. And when we play the simulation, it starts to work as we'd like it to. Nice, really nice. Stop it again, bring it back to zero, and everything switches off. That's great. Now, one last little thing I've done here, um, just to show you that how just how versatile this setup can actually be. I've got an LED here, um, which is like an LED display, which has got some text in it saying train approaching. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring that in here, put it over there, and then what I'll do is just select in the, t in the properties here, um, visible in editor. So this is going to be off and it's going to switch off and switch on alternately. That's what we're going to do here. And for this, I just need a single condition. Just one condition will do nicely. So just bring a logic condition in. And then all I've got to do is plumb in, oops, don't want to do that, plumb in the compare here. If I plumb this into the switch, and then I simply say, just plumb that into there, see what's going on at the moment. So I've got train approaching on. If I just put a one in the bottom there, that will allow us to switch the thing off and on. And it needs the one in the bottom because at frame zero, we want everything to be switched off. OK, so that's good. Let's just have a quick go and see what we get now. So now we get that. It's not quite working yet. What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? I bet I've done something wrong here. Let's have a look. So I've got a switch. I've got to compare. Um, what have I got there? I've got a compare going in there into the switch. I need. Oh, I need. Of course, I know. I know what I need. I need the flip flop. So I need that plumbed into there. And that should give us what we want now, because the flip flop is going to switch the the LED on and off alternately. That's all I needed to do. So let's have a go. See if that works. Yep, and it's working perfectly. 
So that's quite a nice little setup and, and quite versatile. Um, you know, very, very easy to set up. I mean, obviously, the, the train approaching thing, you need a little bit more modeling and stuff to build a proper LED display. It was just something I threw together just to show you what could be done and just how versatile this is. But that's the setup for it. Uh, if we just stop the timeline. So to recap, what we did, we've got a time node at the beginning to give us the frames, and that's plumbed into a modulo. It's set to 30. I mean, if you want to change it, it's very easy just to, to make this work faster or slower. I mean, if you change the 30 to, say, 10, if we just do that and we play the timeline, we're going to get a much faster setup. So you could put a user data slider in there and, and control the speed of the thing via that if you wanted to. But it's pretty cool. So we'll put it back to 30. Very easy to control. So let's, let's just carry on with this recap. So we've got the math modulo, which is controlling the speed. The compare is, is also, of course, is linked to this. It's, it's one of the most important aspects of it, this, these two things working together. So it's compared to uh, a zero, and you'll always get a zero at the output of a modulo once it hits the number that you put in there. So as soon as you hit 30, it's going to put a zero out of the output, and then the compare comes in and says if it's equal to zero, then a one comes out of the output of there and triggers the switch, which causes the monoflop, or the flip-flop, I should say, to alternately switch between a zero and a one, which allows us to switch the lights uh, and, of course, the display here that I've put in as well. And then simply to, to actually switch everything off at the beginning, I just put another compare node in there and allowed us to switch between the object here, which is the off, and what's coming out of the, 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 two, the two conditions here, which are being controlled by the flip-flop. And then finally, we just pass the materials and, of course, to the LED display. So... It's really quite a simple setup. I mean, have a good play with it and see what you can do with um, with flip flops, because there's so many other things you can do. I'm probably going to do another tutorial uh, involving flip flops at some point. In fact, I may do a major project on it, um, which might be a course. I don't know. I might, might that might be a sort of saleable course that I do at some point in the future. But anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you find it useful. And I'll see you very soon on the next one.